Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Naval vessels perform a wide variety of different roles while at sea. From reconnaissance and routine patrol to providing intel on global conditions, various ships will often spend months at a time in international waters far from home. Since most of these missions involve peacetime operations, it's sometimes difficult to remember that these vessels are actually heavily armed weapons of war. For example, a U.S. Navy destroyer will typically boast weapon systems capable of engaging targets in the air, on land, and both above and below the water surface. Some of the most common and powerful types of ordnance found aboard ships like this are naval strike missiles. These versatile surface-to-surface -surface weapons allow littoral combat ships like the USS Gabrielle Giffords to engage multiple targets at once easily. In fact, some of these missiles can be programmed to strike targets more than 100 miles away with incredible precision. However, an enemy vessel or aircraft might sometimes be too close for guided missiles to be used safely. For this reason, most modern naval vessels are also equipped with one or more heavy guns or cannons. One of the most common examples of a heavy defense gun is the remote-controlled 57mm MK-110 gun. Developed by Swedish arm company Bofors in the early 1970s, this cannon has become the go-to weapon for ships from more than a dozen different countries. Though far from the most powerful cannon of this type, the MK-110 has a much higher rate of fire and a more versatile selection of ammunition. For instance, rather than fire typical cannon shells, the weapon can be modified to fire explosive artillery or prefragmentation ammo. It can also rotate a full 360 degrees, angle its barrel to 78 degrees, and fire up to 200 rounds a minute. Perhaps most impressive is that these rounds can travel more than 19,000 yards in certain conditions giving the gun a range of over five miles. When it comes to operating aircraft at sea, most navies need to rely on aircraft carriers. However, many modern naval vessels have landing pads for helicopters and other vertical takeoff and landing craft. Over the past 20 years, many aircraft have switched from standard manned craft to remote-controlled drones. Of course, using drones has many unique benefits. The most obvious is that missions will not risk the lives of crew members or pilots. So, if a ship is operating in a potentially hostile area, it can deploy a drone with far more confidence. Modern unmanned drones can also be designed smaller and carry more equipment due to the lack of cockpit and life support. And, without a living, breathing pilot on board, these aerial vehicles can stay aloft for much longer. While most drones are used for reconnaissance and resupply, the MQ-8B Fire Scout is also designed with combat in mind.
Depending on the mission, it can be modified to carry laser-guided glide weapons, Hellfire missiles, and even supplies and ammunition for troops when needed. Littoral combat ships are designed to be as self-sufficient as possible. However, there's no escaping that they require fuel, food, and ammunition replenishment from time to time. Unfortunately, their missions often take them thousands of miles away from home and far from a safe harbor. So rather than put their current operations on hold and sail home, these vessels typically utilize what's known as underway replenishment. This is when a resupply vessel pulls up alongside the LCS, matching its speed while maintaining a safe distance. Once the two are moving in concert, the supply ship will attach a series of cables between the two vessels. Using a system of pulleys, equipment, food and other valuable supplies can be unloaded, while trash and other refuse are offloaded. There are also special ships that can hook up special hoses, allowing fuel to be transferred from one ship's tank to the other. Releasing However, it's important to remember that this process must be done quickly and without either boat coming to a stop, as it leaves both vessels open to potential attack from hostile forces. Strong hand, weak hand, hook foot, turn and go. In the military, one of the guiding principles is practice makes perfect. That's why most naval vessels perform a vast array of tests, trials, and practice runs to ensure both equipment and crew are adequately prepared for the real thing. Mock combat is a big part of this. And thanks to unmanned vehicle technology, it's easier than ever to do live fire exercises. In this example, a light drone provides surveillance from above, while the USS Dahlgren encounters an empty ship playing the role of an attacking enemy craft. As the ship uses its cannon to engage the ship, the drone evaluates each shot and performs calculations to improve accuracy. After each volley, correction data is provided to the cannon operator. This process is then repeated until the target is successfully destroyed. This teamwork is essential to how the modern Navy operates, but it is built upon centuries of tradition. In fact, naval vessels will often coordinate in what are known as strike groups, or when an aircraft carrier is present, a carrier battle group. Task forces like these first appeared during the Second World War, when submarine warfare was at its height. The goal of traveling in a group like this is to ensure multiple vessels with various capabilities are always paired together. Not only can they protect one another in the case of an attack, but they present a far more formidable target than a single ship traveling alone. Each vessel in a strike group will be assigned a role. For instance, submarines and frigates can patrol at sea level and below where a destroyer might be able to defend against air attacks. The aircraft carrier, of course, can provide air support while a tanker ship might carry supplies and fuel.
Though not common, there are times when even multiple aircraft carriers will practice maneuvers together. In this video, you can see the USS Ronald Reagan, the USS Theodore Roosevelt, and USS Nimitz sailing together as part of an extensive strike force exercise. For one reason or another, these sorts of exercises can do a lot of good in unstable regions. For instance, here in the Indo-Pacific, the presence of the U.S. Navy has long promoted regional security and prosperity. It's all part of the greater mission of the military, which embraces peace over war. That said, it's worth remembering how much punishment these vessels can deal with if the situation ever calls for it. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.